Hi everyone, it's Rita Idris back again to present this week's news bulletin at Pulse Social. Firstly, the International Hockey Federation announced that it has changed its rules to allow female players more choice over their kit wear. They can now choose between a skirt, a skirt, which is a skirt with shorts attached underneath, and shorts. In the previous rules by the FIH, you were allowed to wear either sports and shorts, but they were not allowed to be worn in combination within one team. We have also seen that England's football kit for this summer's Women, Women's World Cup changed from white to blue shorts after players expressed period concerns. Previous research shows that 70% of participants had seen girls drop out of sports because of sports kits for body image concerns. This change shows a huge positive step forward in making sports a more inviting environment for females, as expressed by Holly Penn Webb, the GB hockey captain, who told the BBC that it is a big milestone for female sports. Female sports is on the rise, and a positive change like this will only increase participation. There's also been a big step forward for disability sports. The International Paralympic Committee announced that the UK Sport and British Paralympic Association are its preferred partners to assist with the transfer of governance and the creation of independent bodies for the sports of paraathletics and paraswimming. They announced that Manchester, UK is a preferred location for the governing body. This will allow a transfer of governance that will create world para-athletics and world para-swimming as independent bodies with their own governance structures as IPC will cease to act as an international federation. Dame Catherine Granger, Chair of UK Sports, said that this will allow for exciting development in the world of para-athletics and para-swimming. And now for some news at Pulse Social. In this week's podcast, we speak to Nancy Mokogo about her time at Pulse Social as well as her shift from Kenya to the UK and her time playing sports in Kenya. We also speak about the participation of female youth in sports in Kenya, as well as Nancy's past in volunteering as a university student. In particular, we delve into some of the cultural tra- traditional sports of Kenya. Tune in to learn more. The first vlog of the week follows this discussion with Nancy about traditional Kenyan sports. With the rise of Kenyan athletes on the world scale, as well as successes in other worldwide sports, traditional Kenyan sports is often overlooked. The blog delves into a couple of traditional sports of Kenya, from bullfighting to wrestling, and the impact they have on bringing the community together. Blog 2 focuses on a Japanese phenomena, Radio Taisu. This simple Japanese warm-up, akin to calisthenics, has been heralded as the secret to a long and happy life. The blog explores the history of the exercise, the benefits that come along with it, as well as simple steps on how to take part. Read the blog to find out more. And that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for listening and tune in next week for the next news bulletin.